I get up dark early, put on my boots. I get to ride the four-wheeler and check cows and do other things. I help put cows away. I just remember growing up when, you know, I was just, just short and little and falling asleep on the floorboard of the tractor or, or uh, hauling cows to pasture or whatever it was and sleeping in the pickup so dad wouldn't leave you in the morning. And, and I want to hand those to my kids and instill hard work and enjoy the time outside and just the time with being with family. One big thing about this operation is I get to be with my dad, I get to be with my sister, and my kids get to be with them too. m and Feeders is a family operation. My dad and uncle, Marvin and Mel, started it back in the early 90s. Well, basically, we, we moved out of uh, Idaho in 1992 to come out here to uh, feed cattle and uh, the reason we moved because we could see the cattle industry was changing and moving this way. The packers were out here and the corn was out here and uh, it was a good move for us. It was tough but we knew that's what, we prayed about it in the driveway and we prayed that if it was God's will that the doors would open and they did open. And the biggest thing was when it did open to have the faith to walk through the door and to keep going. I just had a really good opportunity. I was going to school. I kind of had the path and I thought I was going to, we just had the Elm Creek operation. I was maybe looking at a nutrition field, maybe work with a feed supplier or just something tied to the ag industry, to the cattle industry specifically. When I was at school down there, I got a phone call uh, from, my, from my dad. He said, we've got a chance that feed yard that we looked at five years ago, um, we've got the opportunity to maybe purchase it. Uh, we'd like to have a phone call with you and, and Marvin and, uh, and make sure this is what you want to do. Because if, if we're going to go forward, you need to be involved in this. If not, then we're happy with the operation that we have in Elm Creek. It was like getting that winning lottery ticket. I mean, you have the opportunity to do what you want to do, to come back, be large enough to establish and carry a family take care of customers. I just felt that it was good timing and it was a blessing. I thought, let's jump in with both feet and go. Honesty is the best business advertisement you can have. We have always stuck to our guns on that and it has always paid off. It's about treating people right, treating people with integrity. We want to take care of the customer cattle the same way that we would take care of our own and even better because their trust is in us to take care of their cattle. I really care about the animals, and so for me, it's it's very emotional. It's not just I clock in, feed a bunch of animals, leave, they're on their own type attitude. I, I really put my heart into it, and I'm on call. I tell people I'm like a doctor without doctor pay, because if there's anything wrong, you gotta drop everything you do and go help them. God had brought us here, and it's a servant's business, and if you don't have a servant's heart, in this kind of industry, when it's 30 below and it's blowing snow and you got to go out and take care of the animals just like they're your own, it makes a difference. But you have that place in your heart before that day ever arrives. And you just keep on doing what you're doing and don't give up. We treat your cattle like family because our families, generation after generation, we've been in the cattle business. We've just really appreciated the animal for everything it does and we've cared for it. We wouldn't be able to have this operation without the families and with the people that work here. It's definitely a team that we have to have. Everyone has to help the other person. There's one thing about our side is you have to be involved in a little bit of everything. Just over the years, the cattle have improved. We used to feed a lot of mixed cattle, put together cattle, a lot of colored cattle unknown genetics. We've really seen the value of buying cattle off of one ranch or off of a bigger group of cattle from people that are really invested in improving their genetics all the way from reproductive traits or carcass traits and the big thing that we see is on the finishing the cattle. We get to see that they've spent the money on bulls or on genetics and things like that where we could get a premium for the cattle. 
Yeah, one big difference in, in our operation is we have our own cow herd. We really emphasize on carcass traits. We do a lot of AIing with superior genetic, all Angus. It's really been a valuable tool in our operation to see what using the top Angus genetics and what we can do to, to better our herd. And then we can also talk to our customers and say, hey, this is maybe some genetics or different bulls or sires that we've used uh, and we've liked it. We're not pushing anything on anyone. Everyone has to fit their operation. But we have the advantage that we get to see from the beginning all the way to the end. And we've actually picked up some customers that do the same thing and we can kind of work with them and they can take advantage of the genetics and then they get to see full circle when the cattle are harvested. If we bought the cattle, we want to know how good his cattle are so we can bring them back again. And we'd like to establish a relationship with that customer so that he could be part of the process and he would understand that the improvements he's making in his cow herd are making full circle and we're reaping what he's sowed here in the feed yard. Certified Angus beef has been a way that we can strive to add more value to our carcass, to add um, more premium. Anything that we can do to add a premium for our own cattle or for the customer cattle, and then also have a good product for the consumer. CAB allows us to be more profitable at this feedlot so that we can continue doing what we're doing and we can pass it on to the next generation. When I was uh, in Idaho, raised there, I stayed there till I was 40 years old. I'd get up at uh, 6.30 and we was milking cows and we was feeding cattle. And uh, I had to feed all the baby calves before I went to school. I didn't dream at anything. I would be back here in the middle of Nebraska uh, doing what we're doing. Uh, we've been blessed that uh, we've given this this area and this, this facility and uh, blessed with my kids because they, they love the business. You've got to love what you do when you get out of bed in the morning. If you don't like what you got doing when you get out of bed, your day's not going to go good. I can guarantee you. One thing we've always been taught growing up is no matter what you do, don't just do okay. Make sure that you improve something. Make sure you make it better than the way you found it. Excellence to me means doing your best at every little thing, all the little things that nobody else wanted to do. As far as putting a lot of money in the bank at the end of the generation, I don't know whether you do, you just pay for a lot of property, you pay for a lot of equipment, you pay for horses and you pay for horse trailers and, and you enjoy life. And But if you get back to the basics, to hang on to your family and keep them, close to you, you influence them to, during their life. That, that would that be the most pleasing thing I could think of.